Well, Halcyon is a research program about healthy ageing and it brings together over 25 researchers in the UK who are working on um, some of the most well-known studies of population, uh, population studies. And uh, it was set up to complement the um, research that's traditionally done on aging in this country, which is to look at chronic diseases, specific diseases like coronary heart disease, osteoporosis, diabetes, for example. And if you think about it, one of the most striking things about those diseases is that um, age itself is the most important risk factor. The older you get, the more likely you are to get diagnosed with these diseases. So um, there's been growing interest on actually that we should study ageing itself, uh, and I mean that in three ways. Um, what are the underlying biological processes of ageing that might be common to all these diseases? Uh, how do people uh, function, how does ageing affect how people function in their everyday life well before we, these diseases are manifest? And also why is it that some people maintain their health and function uh, much longer than other people do and others uh, have an accelerated ageing uh, and then are more at risk of disease later on. So the purpose of the Halcyon program is to understand as much about the development of healthy ageing as we already know about the development of chronic diseases. And one of the exciting findings in the last 20 years or so about that has been that we've discovered that things that happen to you early in life can really affect um, how, uh, whether you get chronic diseases in later life. So an obvious question to ask is, is that true also for the chances of healthy ageing? Does early life experience matter? In the Halcyon programme, we've decided to uh, focus on a number of um, different aspects of healthy ageing. Uh, the first is physical and cognitive capability, and that's the capacity to undertake the physical and mental tasks of daily living. The second is social and psychological well-being, how we feel, how we function in our everyday life. And we think these, uh, these two things are really important because um, as people, as we think old people, older people, um, these are things that really matter to older people. And in fact, I think we've been summing up in a phrase lately that um, healthy ageing is about keeping moving, keeping your marbles and keeping your spirits up. So that's the sort of focus. Um, but we're also looking at biological processes that we think underlie ageing. And we've picked three of those. Uh, the first is cortisol, which is one of the body's uh, stress hormones. And the second is uh, telomere length, which is the cell's natural clock for telling the body how old it is. And the third are genetic factors that we're aware uh, may well influence how we age. So the main aim of Halcyon is therefore to investigate factors across the life course that might affect how well we age. And to do this, you need to follow up uh, samples of the population that have been followed up for a long time, and preferably from childhood or even from birth. And we're really lucky in the UK, there are quite a few cohorts like this. And so one of the novel things about our program is bringing nine of these cohorts together for the first time to study ageing. And uh, these are cohorts that have been born. Some of them were born as early as 1921, some of them as late as 1958. So that's great. We cover the whole range of older people from the uh, oldest old right down to the post-war baby boomers. So in, this, um, in these cohorts, physical capability has been measured by simple tests like um, hand grip strength, um, how long it takes to stand up and sit down in a chair several times, whether people can maintain a uh, balance by standing on one leg, uh, and their walking speed. Um, and cognitive capability has been tested by things like um, tests of memory and processing speed. And all these performance tests, we know they decline with age, and so the people who actually do better on these tests, uh, research shows that they're more likely to live for longer and to be healthier uh, while they're alive, so that's really important. And then the way we've looked at psychological and social well-being in these cohorts, generally they've tended to ask about rather negative um, feelings rather than positive feelings. So one of the things the Halcyon um, program has done is introduce uh, new positive measures of well-being into these cohorts uh, so that we can study the, the, the good end as well as the, as the bad end. Um, and we've also interviewed some of the study members to find out what they think about ageing too and to tell their life histories, which is, I think is really important and very enlightening. Well, I think the impact of the research is going to hopefully affect people in a number of ways. Um, 
if we find the, our findings across these cohorts are consistent, then actually this is much better evidence for policy and it, it, we can generalise. And um, policymakers and practice health professionals could use this in a number of ways. So for example, it may be that by introducing some of these simple tests like measuring somebody's grip strength uh, earlier in a sort of screening program, we may be able to identify the people who are uh, likely to have a harder time when they age or age faster. So that would be important. We could then perhaps offer more timely interventions so that they don't decline so fast. We also want to um, our findings on how we um, harmonise and analyse the data. Uh, we, we, um, there are younger cohorts coming up where we'd like these measures to be put in these cohorts and also to advise about how, uh, how best that you can study these. Um, but lastly and most importantly, I think for the older people themselves, our findings reported fairly and carefully can actually make help them make decisions about which health messages to uh, take notice of, which ones to ignore. Uh, it might make them think about going perhaps earlier to seek help if they notice changes in their mental and physical um, well-being or their performance, cognitive performance. Uh, and I think for younger people, I think if they realise that ageing is something that actually happens across the whole of life, not when you get ill, it might actually encourage younger people to take up healthy activities earlier before they even have any signs of these ageing.